Buenos días, campeones. Buenos días, campeones. Buenos días, campeones. Welcome to our show. Oh, buenos días, campeones. Buenos días, campeones. Buenos días, campeones. Welcome to our show. Welcome to our show. Welcome to our show. <laughs> Buenos días. <Yay! laughs> Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you, Miss Gillis? I'm good. How are y'all? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what have, what you been up to? Well, you know, kind of like what most of us have been up to, kind of monitoring a little bit of schoolwork, my three kids, doing some work at home on the computer. Uh, we've been to the lake a couple times. Mom and mom has a camp at the lake, so nice change of scenery to you know, hang out there for a little bit. Is it is the water cold or how is it? Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> my kids say my kids say no, but you know, when I stick my toes in, I'm like, mm, no, no, I'm not ready to swim. However, they don't care. You know, even yeah. when their lips are blue and they're like shivering, they're like, no, it's not cold. It's worth I'm it. Like, okay. <laughs> I'll say the water at Cove Creek this weekend was pretty chilly. Oh yeah, colder than the lake for sure. Hey, will you tell us, uh, so we just, uh, I bet most people probably know who you are, but we started just to uh, uh, have our guests tell the school, because, uh, you know, when we have a second grade teacher on, their high school students that probably don't know who that person is. So, Will you tell our people at home uh, who you are and what you do at our school? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Heather Gillis, and I work in the front office. Um, if you're tardy late, then we're really good buddies. <laughs> or if you leave early a lot, then we're really good buddies. Um, otherwise, I see you, you know, you may come see me for a variety of other things, uh, which I definitely miss. I just want you all to know I miss all my tardy kids and all my kids that leave early and all my kids that come to the desk, all my frequent visitors. And even those of you I see in the hall sometimes, I miss you all so much. Definitely. Definitely. Hey, we understand too that uh, you have maybe uh, what we call like a party trick or something, <laughs> some fun, cool knowledge that you could bestow on us. <laughs> right. So, you know, in some of my free time, I tend to watch, you know, some Facebook videos or, um, you know, some Pinterest stuff. And so for all those of you who want to know um, how you're actually supposed to fold, close your cereal box, I'm going to show you. So, just down a little bit. So you take your cereal box. You fold the end in first. See, okay. Yep. Okay, looks really like mine. <clears throat> and then you fold one side in. So you take and you pinch the sides in like this. Oh, hold on. Pinch the sides in like this. So this is how it looks. And so once you've got it like this, and you take it and you just tuck that other side in, you've got this perfectly folded cereal box. Oh, that you're wow. Tucking up out of. Oh, that is, is that awesome. Is that amazing or what? Yeah. What sorcery is this? <laughs> right? So I've gone around and folded all my cracker boxes and all my cereal boxes like this because, you know, when you got a little free time, <laughs> you, can, you too can fold your cereal and your cracker boxes. It's crazy too because it looks like a milk carton almost, but yeah. It does. It's just cool because it stays closed. Yeah, that's awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you for it helps, you it helps if you fold the inside. I mean, if you have kids and they pour their own cereal, frequently you go to the box and it's, you know, not folded up on the inside and stale. Stale. <laughs> well, it would have made for great watching if you had turned it upside down and everything and just filled out a little part of me was really hoping that that was going to happen well see what <laughs> you do though is when you're on video is you make sure there's nothing in the box um oh. the magic but, of television but, but that's not true there really was stuff in the box but um it was <laughs> i can hear it but you know i don't want to clean up a mess so <laughs> Hey, uh, Miss Gillis, we know uh, that you are one of the original I see Imagineers. OG. 
Will you, uh, is, is there a fun story or could you tell us a little bit about what it was like for you back in the, back in the very beginnings? Wild, yeah, so wild west I, guess days. I, I, I wasn't an employee day one. Um, I did start what used to be the Imagine Community Partners, which was the parent organization. Um, and then about a month in, uh, Ms. Townley asked me if I could sub. So then I started subbing. Um, and then I was hired, I think in October or November to run enrollment because at that point, you know, we were, what, 350-ish or so, I think is about where we were for enrollment. Um, and we were doubling that next year. So she needed some help with, um, with that. Um, I guess, I mean, one of the funniest things is, um, let's see, this is year six, is that right? So five out of the six years, I've been in a different office. Um, okay. I've never been in the same place, which I'm sure a lot of people understand also. Um, but, you know, I used to be in the, the um, office, I think it was Mr. Mitchell's office over in the old building. People may remember it as Mr. Mitchell's office. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, that used to be the main entrance. Yep. Um, when I was in doing an enrollment, I was, uh, that first year, I was next door um, in the teacher lounge slash music room slash <laughs> conference room slash, you know, There were a lot of slashes room. in those days. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I mean, every space was a multiple-use space. Uh, and every person was a multiple use person too. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, people have asked about working in a charter school. I'm like, yeah, nobody really has one job type. Um, everybody has like multiple job titles. Yeah. Uh, which is part of what I love. Like it's, you know, it's fun and interesting every day. Um, you know, my, I was out front when we, when we, you know, added that whole other half of the building. I was out front and helped um, design that space. And then Mr. Barton painted that cool scene on it. <clears throat> um, and that was a cool space. So um, that was probably my favorite, just because I had to see all the kids during the day as they're transitioning from transitioning from one place to another. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah. it was it, inter inter interesting times. You know, I've been a modular building. I was over at um, Turtle Creek occasionally. Um, <laughs> you know, all the places. All, all the things. places. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Barton and I know all the things you're talking about well, because we've been in all those places, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you guys happen to have a ukulele hat close by? I do. Excellent. I know a place where I can be great. I can build a better me. Every single day, at invest collegiate. We imagine, we nurture, we value, we engage, sustain and transform as we champion opportunities in leadership and learning, embracing greatness, inspiring achievement, all within a telescopic environment. Invest collegiate imagine. All right. In preparing for you to come on the show, Miss Gillis, our production staff kept thinking about the fact that you are the gateway to IC Imagine and have been for you know most of the school's history. Uh, so we decided to ask you about the gateway to the Smokies. Old Fort, North Carolina. So you are oh, going to have. That doesn't sound own, real good for me. <laughs> not my job quiz about Old Fort. Um, yeah. So yes. hopefully you'll do well. Maybe like I lived there for five years. So um, it's down I the mountain. Like One of the answers. The that's about all I got. <laughs> So we're going to be asking you four questions about Old Fort, okay. and you have a couple lifelines. Uh, Mr. Barton can um, tell you the answer from another room, kind of shout it at you, or I have a friend here who can uh, whisper the answer at you. It's a new friend uh, that our people can meet if you need the help. Okay. It's not Fisher today. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, would you like me to take the first question, Mr. Barton? Sure, man. All right. So. Old Fort is known for several festivals, uh, including which of the following? A, 
Mule Days. <laughs> B, the Gold Festival. Or C, the North Carolina Seed Spitting Championships. <laughs> seed Spitting? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, so... I don't know. Um, I mean, seed spitting sounds like the most interesting, but I don't know. Uh, what was the wait? What was my first choice? Your first choice was Mule Days. Mule Days. I don't know. There aren't many mules around anymore. Not really. So um, maybe some gold. Gold Festival? In these there hills? Yeah, I think I'll go with that. You Yay! <laughs> yes. Uh, Mule Days is actually a festival in Benson, North Carolina, which is way down in the eastern part of the state. Yeah, hey, uh, I that one. And there are seed spitting championships, but none in Old Fort that we could dig up or our production staff could find, so. Yeah. Well, help coach a softball team. I bet some of those girls would be really good at it. You know, just sunflower seeds. Uh, one of the, now that I'm remembering it, one of the responses that we got in, uh, in response to our silly sport episode with Coach Dameron <laughs> was uh, someone telling us about watching cherry, cherry pit spitting championships, I believe on ESPN, because that was all they really had to show. <laughs> ESPN 8, the Ocho. Well, I like some sports, but I might have had to pass on that one. <laughs> All right, question number two. In 2010, this distinction was bestowed on Old Fort. Uh, was it A, the deer tick capital of the Southeast? Was it B, uh, North Carolina Mountain Heritage Trout Town? Or was it C, a United States Geyser Destination Town? I don't know. I feel like what I heard, there was a geyser there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, might be, I might better get a, a hint on this, like a, you know, help a friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so I'm really curious look for, to see who Mr. Um, Higgins' friend is. So maybe oh, yes. that person can help me. Yeah, yeah I, was, I got you. I'm curious about okay. this too. Uh, I've got um, Eleanor <laughs> here with me. <laughs> who would love to tell you the answer to this question. Is the answer inside? I was going to say, is it only Eleanor or does Eleanor have friends? Right? Hold on, let me ask. <laughs> Eleanor doesn't know the answer to this one. She's going to have to ask someone else, so. Okay. <laughs> She's squeaky. <laughs> she might need some WD-40 or something. Eleanor invited her other friend, um, Samantha, to come and tell us the answer. So actually, Samantha's going to whisper to you the answer. OK, okay. Samantha, lay it on me. Old Fort is a North Carolina trout town. <laughs> I think it might be a trout town. You guessed it. Yes. <laughs> yes, you should tell Samantha. Thanks. She's really cool, like the haircut. Oh, yeah. All right, bye, Samantha. <laughs> Uh, two for two thus far. Right? All right. So, while the answer to the last question was not that it is a U.S. geyser destination, there is a geyser or Andrew's geyser in Old Fort. So, Guys. what is Andrew's geyser? <laughs> is it A, a man made fountain? fed by gravity, built in 1885. B, a naturally, sped, naturally fed spring geyser in Pisgah National Forest. Or C, the, a misspelling of the oldest community member who's been on the town council for the past 60 years. 
Oh wow. Um, I mean, I really want to. I really want to think that it's like a natural geyser in Pisgah Forest. <clears throat> um, but maybe not. So maybe I don't know. It's Andrew's name misspelled. Uh, what, what was my first choice? Your first choice was that it is a man, a man made, made fountain. fountain constructed yeah. in 1885. I'm going to go with the first one, a man made fountain. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, I'm guessing good today. You are. It's I one of those things. a lottery ticket. <laughs> It's one of those things where you're like, oh, Andrew's geyser, let's go check it out. And then you pull up and you're like, this, this is a fountain. This is not a geyser. <laughs> and if they had spelled the community member's uh, name correctly, they would have called him Andrew's geezer. That's what we were <laughs> getting at there. So. <laughs> Probably so. All Having right. lived there for as long as I did and knowing what the town council is like would not have surprised me. <laughs> I actually, I did a, uh, an art contest there years ago. It was uh, called a plein air painting contest. And they, uh, you arrived and they gave me all these destinations that I could go to paint things. You were supposed to stay within a five mile radius of the town center. And one of the destinations was the geyser. And I was like, geyser, what? There's a geyser here? And so I was all excited about going. I drove out there and I was like, is this the geyser? <laughs> and it, it's a fountain. <laughs> it sounds very underwhelming yeah i think the fountain that's in the center of the lawn at the biltmore is probably about the same size <laughs> a decent size fountain for a little town you know <laughs> yeah right? and in 1885 it was like whoa all right probably. question number four uh davidson fort which is the the original fort uh, that is old fort uh held which claim uh, so, uh, in, it was the least populated incorporated town in the U S it was the westernmost outpost in colonial America, or, uh, it inspired Charlie Daniels to write uneasy rider. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just a reminder, you have a lifeline. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, like I said, the only thing I know about uh, Old Fort is it's down the mountain. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to have to use that last lifeline. All right. It's the westernmost outpost in colonial America. So there's like this little voice in my head that just came through and it said something about the westernmost outpost. You got it. <laughs> four for four perfection. Yes. <laughs> so what's the prize these days? Did y'all come up with a new prize since toilet paper's not a thing? I need dog food. I gotta get some dog food today. Is that oh, a prize? You and me both. <laughs> At the time, I had toilet paper to just run and get and be like, hey, you get toilet paper. But uh, I think my dogs would be upset if I, like, forked over some dog food. Oh, I've got a good one for you. I just happen to have okay. it right here. Okay. A new Be Kind pin. Oh, yeah. Fresh off, oh. <laughs> Fresh off the presses. <laughs> it survived me just throwing it across the room. So, hey, that's and awesome, because that I actually gave my other one away. Well, perfect. And it's got a magnetic clasp this time. Oh, look at us moving up in the world from fancy. safety pins. Fancy. Extra fancy. <laughs> all right, well, I'll set that can, one aside for we you. We can all use a little be kind these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for being on our show. Thanks for having me. And we'll say goodbye to everybody at home. We'll see you all next time. Bye, Imagine Community.